Okay, what's up guys, how's it going? Henry Marsh here and today I want to quickly chat a little bit about doing some self-portraits. On Saturday I went to my little home studio and took a bunch of self-portraits of myself and yeah, I want to quickly run through how I did that. So just to get into a little bit of the technical stuff, uh, the things that you're going to need to do your own self-portraits is obviously a camera of any kind. You can use your cell phone, but for the portraits that I'm going to be showing you guys, I'm doing these specifically on a DSLR uh, with a lens and some lights. So the gear that I was specifically using for this shoot was a Sony a7 III, a Tamron 28 to 75mm lens, and some Godox lights being the Godox 8600 Pro and the 8200s. A uh, little bit later on, we're going to get into some of the details regarding softboxes and the lighting modifiers that I was using, the Magmod gels and grids. So the first thing that you want to know with uh, self-portraits is that you actually want to have your camera up on a tripod or some stable platform so that you can set your camera up nicely and just have it keep firing off in the same place so it doesn't change. So you also want to have your camera be in manual exposure settings. So set your camera up, see if you can get um, just a nice well-balanced exposure. Um, for this specific scenario, my camera settings were uh, ISO 200, the f-stop was 5.6 and my shutter speed was 1 250th of a second. It's all got to do with lighting and that kind of thing. You, If you're using a cell phone, have it on auto, it really, really doesn't matter. It's all about actually your expression in front of the camera rather than anything else. Um, so if you're using a DSLR and maybe even if you are using your cell phone, I would suggest putting the camera into some kind of intervalometer or time-lapse mode. That way you can actually just flow through some poses, uh, specifically with the camera that I've got. I was using the camera's intervalometer with a two second delay. So every single two seconds it would take a photograph and yeah, that allowed me the opportunity to flow through some poses and things. So let's quickly run through. I did a little bit of a behind the scenes video over here. So here you can just see me setting up my tripod and trying to get my composition correct. So the biggest thing that I find is the hardest thing with, with um, taking self portraits, especially with a camera is getting focus. So you'll see, I've actually got the chair there, a little rain making an appearance. Um, I've got the chair there that I'm using to focus on. Um, with regards to this specific shoot, uh, I'm using a softbox on the 8600 Pro uh, with a grid on it, you'll see the grid in some of the photographs actually over here on the top right hand corner You'll see the the, gr the grid showing through and Yeah, so the thing is that you want to do is you want to focus on the chair and I like to set up my softbox and grid at a 45 degree angle sort of you get that really classic Rembrandt styled lighting. It looks really nice and moody. Um, yeah, just something that's off axis gives you a better vibe than just having the light coming straight from the camera. So you'll see me flowing through some poses over here and going through to check the camera. You'll actually notice my first set of photographs. Um, my composition was a little bit off. You ob I obviously can't see the, the camera. And so uh, you'll notice I was actually chopping my head off in some of the photographs and then you'll start to see me getting my composition a little bit better. So sometimes it's actually worthwhile to zoom out, uh, make sure you get a little bit more of the frame in and that way you can always crop in later. But if you crop in in photograph, uh, yeah, sometimes you're going to lose some details. So here you can just see me flowing through some poses and things like that. What's really great is if you've got the camera on a two second timer, you can really guesstimate when the camera is going to take a photograph. Um, I was setting the camera to take between 20 and 40 photographs per set. Uh, and that allowed me to just pose and go through things. Uh, as you can see, I'm definitely not a model. Um, I look very awkward in some of these photographs, but it's, it's always nice to be able to play around. And later on, I actually get into doing some jumping photographs, which is great because you can you can also do the timing of that. So that was the first setup that I did. So the second setup that I actually ended up going with is a style that I'm very, I'm a big fan of, and that is literally just using a bare bulb 
light and you can use any kind of lights for the shoot you really don't need the professional equipment that i have i've seen people do shoots with lamps and just the lights that you buy from a hardware store but obviously having the professional equipment is a hell of a lot easier and more useful so yeah this is just bare bulb coming again from sort of a 45 degree angle um, 45 to the right and 45 up and just bare bulb and as you'll be able to see um, it also gives a very distinct completely different style um, that you'll be able to see over here so again completely completely different vibe um, but it's a, it's a style i'm a big fan of using hard lights and as you can see um, yeah just very very different and again the camera is set on intervalometer i focused sort of in the corner over there and having the the camera take a photograph every two seconds allows me to go through some poses so again if you allow yourself if you allow yourself some place to actually move around you can actually start doing some really cool things and jumping in photographs and leaning and doing things you would otherwise wouldn't be able to do and just giving yourself the space to do that kind of thing um, also allows for some really interesting photographs I'm trying to see here where we get to the the jumping photos um, here we go um, as you can see try not to have anything in the background where you crop your face off and head off um, <laughs> <laughs> and tried to have better facial expressions than than me. That one's not too bad. Um, so yeah, that is the that is the second setup. Okay, so the third setup was a series of portraits that I did of myself, obviously, that I gained inspiration from Nick Fancher. If you haven't checked out Nick Fancher's work, please go do it. His work is absolutely incredible. And the idea behind it was that you wanted to have a a light on certain as certain parts of your face and then a different color light going on in the background. So to achieve this, I've actually used two lights. I've got a light on the background and a light that's gonna be hitting my face. But the, the really unique part of this look is having the lights sort of being cut across the face. And so how you achieve this look is actually just with a thing called a flag, which could just be a piece of cardboard. So here you can see me setting up. Um, I, I was using a C stand, but you can really use any kind of stand that you have, any sort of just even like a bunch of clamps on a pole just to hold your cardboard piece of paper up, but you'll see me setting up shortly. So all, you do, all it is is a piece of cardboard up on a stand, and then you'll see I've actually got, um, I've actually changed out the 8600 Pro for the 8200s with the magma gels on them and so that allows me to change the color of the light coming off off of the flash as well as put a grid on the flash uh, and that sort of again prevents the light from going anywhere else and just hitting me straight on so this was the the, the more difficult set of shoots because now i'm zooming in i'm just doing portraits of my face the shots were a little bit out of focus um, some of the times and it's it's really actually sometimes quite difficult with especially with the Sony system because you're not allowed to have um, a continuous autofocus when you're doing intervalometer shooting so I actually ended up having to use my cell phone as a trigger um, to take a photograph each time so a lot of all the camera manufacturers have this ability even cell phones you can set a self timer um, you can set it up, <clears throat> set a self timer five seconds and it'll take a photograph. So that's what I ended up doing here. So on my face, I've got a, I've got an 8200 with a grid with a red gel. And you'll see just now I set up a blue gel in the background. Now, the hardest part about getting this specific look actually is finding the right angle for the, the paper to be in front of your face. So to block the light, um, but that's all part of the fun, I guess. Okay, so here we go. You can see me, I'm setting up the, the blue flash going on in the background. And that's sort of how we get these two different kinds of looks. And then the rest from here is just experimenting, um, seeing what works, seeing what facial expressions work with you, seeing which part of your face you can block out with the cardboard. But here you can see the photographs that I was doing. As you can see, some of the, sometimes the photographs are slightly out of focus. And again, my camera settings haven't changed. They're still ISO 200, 250th of a second, and f5.6. If you're wondering what software this is, this is Capture One. I've always just found that Capture One's 
image processing is a little bit better than Lightroom's, although it is a bit of a learning curve compared to Lightroom. And then, yeah, as you can see, you're really only limited by your expression and your creativity and what you decide to do with it. So I eventually actually ended up deciding to do shots where I covered my eyes, covered my mouth, and then covered one side of my face because I, I like to post three photographs next to each other. And I thought those was a, that was a good variety. And yeah, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to drop me a comment down below and I will see if I can answer them. But yeah, for now, this is Henry Marsh. I'll catch you guys in the next one.